American aerospace companies SpaceX and Blue Origin recently announced their upcoming space launch missions. The next SpaceX mission will be a Cargo Dragon mission to visit the International Space Station, which will launch atop a Falcon 9 rocket on August 28. This 23rd SpaceX Cargo Resupply Services mission will carry a broad range of scientific research and technology demonstrations to the space station. Some of the major science experiments include the Advanced Plant Experiment, which will study plants' genetic responses to stress to identify key targets for genetic engineering of plants more suited to microgravity. Reducing arthritis-dependent inflammation first phase will evaluate the effects of microgravity and space radiation on the growth of bone tissue and test whether bioactive metabolites might protect bones during space flight. Retinal diagnostics will test the potential to capture images of the human retina in space using a commercially available ophthalmology lens. The GITI robotic arm tech demo will discuss the technology demonstration of a robotic arm designed to conduct common crew activities directed by teleoperations from Earth. The Materials International Space Station Experiment 15 will expose materials such as concrete, thin film solar cells and more to the harsh environment of space to test their performance and durability. The Faraday Research Facility, a new tool for conducting small experiments in microgravity, will host a study testing remote drug delivery. Saturday's launch will be the third flight for SpaceX under NASA's CRS Phase II contract awarded in January 2016. Upon arrival at the ISS on August 29, the 6,000-kilogram spacecraft will be docked at the Harmony module of the space station. On August 18, Blue Origin announced that the company is targeting August 25 for the next flight of its New Shepard suborbital vehicle. The uncrewed mission is scheduled to lift off from Blue Origin's West Texas launch site on Wednesday, and it will be the 17th overall for Blue Origin and the first since the company's debut crewed mission. The mission, known as NS-17, will contain 18 commercial payloads, 11 of which are NASA-sponsored, as well as thousands of postcards submitted by kids via Blue Origin's nonprofit club for the Future Foundation. In addition, the capsule's exterior will host NASA's deorbit descent and landing sensor demonstration experiment, a suite of technologies designed to help spacecraft land more accurately on the Moon and other cosmic bodies. This will be the second Blue Origin flight for the sensor suite, which first reached suborbital space aboard New Shepard in October 2020. The spacecraft will also carry paintings by Ghanaian artist Amoko Bofo on the parachute covers of the capsule, as part of an art project by Uplift Aerospace. The flight will be the eighth for this vehicle, which is different from the one that carried the company's first people to space on a July 20 mission. Elon Musk recently announced that Tesla is working on rolling out a prototype humanoid robot by next year. The announcement was made during the artificial intelligence event the company held on August 19 at its California headquarters. The robot will be 5 feet 8 inches tall and weigh 125 pounds. Its head will be kitted out with the autopilot cameras used by Tesla's vehicles to sense the environment and will contain a screen to display information. Additionally, it will have human-level hands and two axis feet for balance. The bot operates using 40 electromechanical actuators and has force feedback sensing for balance and agility. The Tesla robots will be designed to handle tasks that are unsafe, repetitive, or boring, essentially helping the company solve the problem of labor to some extent. Musk, who has spoken repeatedly about his fears of runaway artificial intelligence said the Tesla bot is intended to be friendly, but that the company is designing the machine at a mechanical level so that you can run away from it and most likely overpower it. At a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um... <laughs> And, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> According to him, the Tesla bots may one day be able to work on Mars, a vision seemingly ripped from the pages of sci-fi novels. A functioning version of the robot didn't make an appearance during Musk's reveal, though a slightly bizarre dance by a performer dressed like a Tesla bot did. The Tesla bot won't be available until next year, especially as the robot will utilize the Dojo supercomputer's training mechanisms to improve functionality. We think we'll probably have... Uh, prototype sometime next year. Neural net planning, labeling, simulation and tools will also be used to help the Tesla bot operate effectively and efficiently. During the presentation Musk also mentioned that the code name for the bot inside the company is Optimus. Rocket Lab announced that it will share a ride on Electron Rocket with Aurora Propulsion Technologies, a Finnish company dedicated to the sustainable use of space, alongside Scottish Pocket Cube satellite manufacturer, Alba Orbital. The Aurora Propulsion Technologies satellite to be carried by the mission is a CubeSat designed to test space junk removal technologies. 
The CubeSat, named AuroraSat-1, is a 1.5-unit CubeSat developed by Aurora Propulsion Technologies in cooperation with Polish small SAT company SatRevolution. The spacecraft is designed to test six resistojet thruster systems designed to help CubeSats quickly detumble and adjust their attitude control. A resistojet thruster provides thrust by heating a typically non-reactive fluid and expelling the expanded gas through a conventional nozzle. Heating is achieved by sending electricity through a resistor consisting of a hot incandescent filament. The spacecraft also consists of a charged microtether intended to create electromagnetic drag and lower the spacecraft's orbit, a technology that could be used to deorbit satellites. AuroraSat-1 was originally scheduled to fly within space transportation provider Momentus on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rideshare mission, but that flight was halted after Momentus failed to receive approval from the Federal Aviation Administration. The Scottish-American PocketCube satellite manufacturer, Alba Orbital, will join the mission alongside AuroraSat-1 to launch a cluster of small satellites designed to demonstrate innovative radio and nighttime Earth observation technologies. The mission carries Alba Orbital's Unicorn 2 PocketCube satellites, as well as three other satellites for Alba Orbital's customers. Each small satellite carries a unique sensor designed to demonstrate innovative technologies in orbit. Unicorn 2 will be carrying an optical nighttime imaging payload designed to monitor light pollution across the globe. Nighttime satellite imagery, otherwise known as nightlights data, provides crucial insights into human activities. This data enables a host of applications such as tracking urbanization and socioeconomic dynamics, evaluating conflict and disasters, investigating fisheries, assessing greenhouse gas emissions and energy use, and analyzing light pollution and health effects. All four pocket cubes will be deployed to a circular orbit around the planet. The launch is expected to take place in the fourth quarter of 2021. NASA's Mars Helicopter Ingenuity made its 12th flight over the Red Planet on August 16. The 1.8 kg autonomous rotorcraft climbed over almost 10 meters high and traveled a total of 450 meters in 169 seconds. The chopper flew over a region called South Ceta, an area that's home to boulders and rocky outcrops of interest to the Perseverance rover team. Unlike most of its recent flights, this sortie saw Ingenuity make a round trip. In performing aerial scouting, Ingenuity captured images that scientists and engineers hope will help determine which of the boulders, rocky outcrops, and other geologic features may be worthy of further scrutiny by the rover. Perseverance is expected to meet up with Ingenuity in the coming days. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. On August 13, we saw Starship 20 being taken to the launch site after completing inspection and minor plumbing works at the build site. After completing some minor works on the tank structure, on August 17, Ship 20 was lifted and placed on the suborbital launch pad B to prepare for the upcoming proof tests. Like all previous Starship prototypes, those proof tests will involve loading the ship with supercool liquid nitrogen to simulate the weight and extreme thermal stress of real propellants without the risk of a catastrophic fire or explosion in the event of anomalies. Once the proof tests are completed without any issues, next will be the installation of the Raptor engines of the ship, followed by static fire tests possibly involving all the six engines of the launch vehicle. For some unknown reasons, probably due to unfavorable weather, all the scheduled road closures of last week were cancelled by the authorities, thus pushing the proof tests to this week. This week's road closures are scheduled from August 23rd to 26th, and the ground tests of Ship 20 will most likely take place during these days. Workers are currently focused on the ship's raceway, a group of plumbing and wiring that runs most of the length of the vehicle's back. The raceway is packed with avionics wire runs, plumbing for propellant loading, and smaller lines for pressurization and hydraulics. Super Heavy Booster 4, which was removed from the orbital launch mount and returned to the build site on August 11, is currently inside the high bay, where teams are still working to finish its secondary plumbing and avionics. On August 14, Elon Musk claimed that Ship 20 and Booster 4 could be stacked and ready for flight in a few weeks. But current scenarios suggest that a two or three weeks timeline is not sufficient to complete the ground tests, assemble the stages, and perform the first true integrate testing of a Starship stack. And as Musk himself pointed out, there is no way for Starship to launch in the next few weeks without regulatory approval and a launch license from the authorities. Through his recent tweet CEO Elon Musk has shared details about some of the design improvements of Starship's forward flaps. For those unfamiliar, Starship uses two pairs of forward and aft flaps for attitude control during descent and to optimize trajectory and energy dissipation. Musk says that there is a slight error with the current design of Starship's forward flaps, necessitating a few small but visible changes on future prototypes of the spacecraft. 
According to Musk, to improve the leverage or torque of Starship's forward flaps and reduce or remove undesirable aerodynamic characteristics, SpaceX is going to shrink those forward flaps further, move them closer together and more towards the tip of Starship's nose, and angle them toward the ship's leeward side. Moreover, the flaps will be positioned approximately 120 degrees apart. Those changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, potentially allowing SpaceX to entirely remove static aero covers that wrap around the ship's flaps to prevent superheated plasma and gas from reaching sensitive components. Now, let's discuss some of the recent developments related to NASA's Human Landing System program. Less than three weeks after the U.S. Government Accountability Office denied protests from Blue Origin and Dynetics over NASA's decision to award SpaceX the Lunar Lander Development Contract, Blue Origin filed its lawsuit against NASA with the U.S. Court of Federal Claims. According to a Blue Origin spokesperson, the company is looking to remedy the flaws in the acquisition process found in NASA's human landing system. He added that Blue Origin firmly believes that the issues identified in this procurement and its outcomes must be addressed to restore fairness, create competition, and ensure a safe return to the moon for America. According to NASA, they are currently reviewing details of the case, and on August 19, NASA confirmed that the agency decided to halt SpaceX's HLS contract work until November 1. In the wake of the first protest submitted by Blue Origin and Dynetics on April 26, NASA and SpaceX were forced to stop cooperative work on the Starship moon lander for more than three months, and the latest lawsuit potentially added another 74 days delay. It's now more likely that being forced to spend more than five months without the ability to work with SpaceX will significantly delay NASA's contributions to HLS and thus humanity's return to the moon. Thankfully, no part of Blue Origin's lawsuit will affect SpaceX's daily operations at Boca Chica, though it almost certainly hampers the company's ability to mature its Starship moon lander design. For Blue Origin's lawsuit to succeed, the company will have to convince a federal judge that basic realities and long-standing precedents of federal procurement are flawed and need to be changed. The odds of success are thus spectacularly low. Bezos' decision to file a lawsuit against NASA is clearly causing tensions within the company, and CNBC reports that at least 17 key leaders and senior engineers have left Blue Origin this summer. In a wild turn of events, Blue Origin's HLS Lunar Lander lead engineer Nathan Aurora recently resigned from the company to join SpaceX. Meanwhile, recently, SpaceX has submitted an FCC application to operate Starlink Generation 2 Constellation and made plans to launch 30,000 new satellites with its fully reusable Starship rocket. This Generation 2 system was designed to complement the first-generation Starlink Constellation that the company is currently deploying. Gen 2 satellites are expected to feature inter-satellite laser links, which will enable communication between satellites to transfer data at a much faster rate. These latest generation satellites will be somewhat larger and will have up to three times the maximum bandwidth of existing Starlink satellites. The preferred configuration for Gen 2 would feature 29,988 Starlink satellites in orbit, deployed at nine altitudes, ranging from 340 kilometers to 614 kilometers. SpaceX currently launches Starlink satellites in clusters of 60 atop a Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell says the Starship launch vehicle will be capable of deploying 400 Generation 1 Starlink satellites during a single launch. Assuming Starship is capable of launching 100 to 150 tons to the low Earth orbits, a single Starship will launch up to 120 Gen 2 Starlink satellites, each weighing approximately 850 to 1,250 kilograms. Moving on to other Starship updates, a recent aerial flyover by RGV Aerial Photography spotted quick disconnect arm attachment points on the already built launch tower. The quick disconnect arm or the automated ground umbilical system connects power and fuel lines to the rocket before launch. The water deluge system nozzles have been spotted between the hold down clamps of the orbital launch table. A water deluge system is a sound suppression system that will direct thousands of liters of water flowing to the stand every minute to cool the rocket exhaust and to absorb or deflect acoustic energy generated during the launch. Last month, Elon Musk revealed that SpaceX is about to begin the construction of a much larger high bay adjacent to the existing structure. The construction of this second high bay has recently begun near the existing high bay. Last week saw the arrival of more Raptors to Starbase, moreover, Raptor tests at SpaceX's McGregor test facility are continuing at a rapid pace. A new nose cone with a much smoother surface compared to the previous Starship nose cones was spotted inside the nose cone manufacturing tent. SpaceX has stacked a small GSE tank at the construction site, whose purpose is currently unknown. 
The thrust puck of Booster 6 was delivered to the build site last Friday. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.